So I give my subscribers opportunities to ask me questions. And Mike asks, how do I insert memorized licks into solos? All right, well, stay tuned for my answer. Hey, Donna here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your playing up to the next level. And for the best music performance and improvisation tips, subscribe to my channel so you'll be the first one to know when a new video comes out each and every week. In my previous video in this series, I outlined some really common mistakes that happen when people want to use licks in their solos. You could check that video out after you watch this video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a cool blues slash jazz lick and incorporate it into your solo. I've shared this information with my students of all ages all over the world, and this has really helped build their confidence when they're soloing. Now before I give you the three steps, we need to talk about where to find these licks. All right, well, the obvious best place to find them is through recordings, okay? The next best place is through live performances, which I strongly encourage you to attend. Uh, attend your local shows, all right? We have to support our fellow musicians. Now the third place, which I feel is not the most ideal, is through transcription books. And the reason why I feel this way is that no matter how great the transcription book is, if you haven't heard the lick played in context, and you haven't really listened deeply to it, you're gonna miss all those nuances that make the lick work. And honestly, written transcriptions never really capture the exact rhythms the soloist use. Now, don't get me wrong, transcription books are great for checking yourself, um, so they are really important, but please use your ears first. All right, step number one. Identify the lick you wanna learn, and learn it by ear even if you have the written transcription. All right, well, hello, Captain Obvious there, okay? You gotta find the lick, right? All right, um, put the music away, all right? Just use your ears. And even if you've gotta slow down the track or even if you've gotta learn it note by note, please use your ears. So, for example, there's an awesome solo by Dexter Gordon on Billy's Bounce. Okay. I'm taking the time to actually hear the solo in my head, even though um, I haven't heard it in a while. What we, we call that audiation, and that's a term coined by Dr. Edwin Gordon. And what that means is that I'm hearing something that I haven't heard in a while. All right, so um, here's that lick I was talking about. Step two, do some quick analysis on the lick. What's the key? Uh, for this solo, it's in concert F, which is my G on the tenor. What's the chords? Well, by knowing these, it's going to give you more clues as to how the notes relate to the chords. Okay, so for this lick, it's over the two chord to the five chord to the one at the end of the blues, right? So that's measures um, nine through 12. So it's my A minor to D7 to G. Now, you don't have to go crazy with the analysis, okay? Analyze it to the level of your own understanding. And you really, you don't have to think about advanced concepts if you're not there yet, it's perfectly fine. So, for example, I know this lick starts on the third of the two chord, goes to the five of the five chord, and then it hits the one at the end. All right, so, so far we've covered two steps of how to use licks and solos. So watch till the end of this video to get that third step. By the way, who here is a Dexter Gordon fan? Hey, let me know by typing Dex in the comments below. Step number three, internalize that lick by, I'm gonna give you two parts to this, okay? So part one, use a metronome and start starting really, really slow, like at 60 beats per minute, uh, play the lick and increase the speed until you're past the initial tempo of the tune. Okay, so I'm gonna set my metronome for 60 beats per minute and I'm gonna play that lick. I'm gonna play it straight. I'm gonna uh, probably slur most of it. And uh, once it's good, then I'm gonna increase the speed. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And so what I did there, I started at 60, and then I kind of sped up the process. I would normally go 60, then 63, 66, 69, 72, um, and then stop where I was starting to mess up. But I really pushed it. I did like 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. And I was listening to make sure that my fingers were relaxed, I was comfortable, um, I knew what notes I was playing, and that I was keeping uh, good time. And I noticed sometimes I wasn't right on the metronome, so I did it a few more times. I would suggest that you do it much slower than I just did. All right, now part two of this is add the backing track so you hear the lick in context with the chords. That's gonna help you to remember it better as well. You can use something like iReal Pro and loop it. Step four, own the lick, part one. Now after you've internalized it, learn it in all keys. So if I wanted to play this in the key of C for me, if I wanted to play this in the key of F, now it does help to have analyzed the lick to know how the notes relate to the chords. Step number five, creating your own variation on the lick. It could be with changing the rhythms. It could also be with just taking a piece of the lick and going somewhere else with it. Now once you've varied the lick, you own it. You can use it any way you want. Okay, so let me show you an example of how I'm going to insert a uh, variation of this lick into an entire solo, entire chorus I should say. Have it. Five steps on how to use licks in your solos. Hey, if you have a suggestion for how to use licks in your solos, put it in the comments below. I read every single comment. I hope you got a lot from this video. Hey, don't forget, check out part one of this series to avoid the mistakes most people make when using licks in their solos. Do me a favor, give this video a like and a share. That lets me know that you want to see more of this content. Thanks so much for joining me. On that note, take care. Have a great day.